What's up guys, it's Sam from Cycle Technology here at Grenerside Woods today where a young Steve Pete honed his badass downhill skills. We've got a bit of a daft comparison going on today. We're going to have a look and see how the Trek Marlin 6 performs against the Slash 8. So yeah, huge difference, totally different bikes, but basically this one's cheap and this one isn't cheap. We're going to be going down, doing some jumps, getting uh, some cool footage, talking about the bikes themselves. Marlin 6 is pretty basic, um, coil sprung fork. It's got Shimano DR 1x10 drivetrain on it, no dropper post, although it is tubeless ready. And then we've got the Slash 8 with its gnarly high pivot, four pot brakes, uh, 1x12 Shimano drivetrain, a big Fox 36s at the front and a Flow X at the rear. Proper enduro bike, I've already had a blast on it, absolutely love it. Not ridden that on these trails yet, not looking forward to it. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so I've had a blast around on both bikes here at Grenerside. Um, I just want to share a few thoughts about each of the bikes. First of all, this Slash is so capable as a downhill enduro bike for the stuff we've been doing here. Like, it just eats everything that you put in front of it the the big rocks the drops the jumps even when you mess it up like it's so forgiving it's got so much grip to rail around those berms and it's got so much travel and the geometry is just so dialed in that it, it, it almost does it for you like i honestly feel like if i'd have been on a different bike doing some of the stuff i'd done today I, I wouldn't have managed to stay upright like this bike has looked after me because it does exactly what it's designed to do which is hardcore enduro bike i i, I want one basically that's that's my verdict on this bike is I want one of these. Uh, it handles just how I want it to handle. It does what I want it to do. It's a, it's a proper joy to ride. I wasn't expecting to have enjoyed it this much, man. It's, it's, a, it's a solid bike. And then we've got the Marlin 6. And well, it's not a slash. It wasn't designed with Grenoside trails or any trails like this in mind, but I have been able to still ride them. I've been able to go around the berms, handle the rocky sections, do some jumps and little drops and things. It's been all right, actually. Where it does better than the Slash, though, is on the climbing. Uh, it's kind of what you'd more consider a cross-country setup. So, yeah, for climbing, it's really nice as well. Um, we're going to do some more trails here, a different part of Grenoside, and then in a little bit, we're going to do some time lapse. So let's get back to it. So I've got familiar with both the bikes and this particular part of the trail at Grenerside and the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to do a timed run from where we started on this trail to where I'm stood right now. Not going to do the whole thing, uh, we're just going to do it to here and we're going to see which bike's fastest. See you up there. Back at the top of wherever this trail is on the Slash, we're doing an unofficial timed race between the Slash and the Marlin 6. I'm going to cut this shot and I'm going to start recording just as I go over that start ramp there and I'll do the same for the Marlin so we can see which one's quicker. I wonder which it'll be.
Wow. Woo. <laughs> this bike is a beast. So, time to run on the mile in six now. I will not be hitting the big jumps. I am not Sam Pilgrim. God of trails, please guide me safely through the glorious jumps and berms. Amen. bike is a beast in a in a different way okay so there you have it i uh, don't have the official times yet but i think it was actually closer than you might imagine this is an absolute beast like proper joy to ride I, I made a few mistakes coming down there and this thing just soaked it all up for me but yeah um this thing i forgot to unlock the lockout suspension after my ride up to the top so i basically rode down there rigid in case you're wondering what the noise was um but yeah it, it managed it berms jumps all that stuff um i wouldn't want to go any bigger on it but honestly that's a pretty capable bike for a 650 quidder um yeah i think it's worth noting as well when we look at the times i spent much more time in the air on this one than i did on this one i tried to keep this one low and low and fast as i could uh but yeah bit of a daft one but honestly good fun to ride both of these bikes even here at these trails so to sum up marlin six cool little trail bike pretty capable a lot nicer on this second trail that we rode first one covered in rocks didn't really enjoy it so much i actually had quite a lot of fun riding this over this side of uh, grenner side it, you know bike for a for a teenager uh, an adult's first bike i'd be stoked if i got this bike when i was a kid you know just a cross-country kind of bike on a budget mile in six all day long more than capable if you've got the money for it and if you don't mind slogging a bit of extra weight uphill the slash is is a, is a monster like for if you want to get into your proper downhill enduro riding big jumps drops shredding the berms all that kind of stuff like that's what i enjoy doing um this is the bike for you i honestly think that i'm probably going to get one of these in the next year or so myself when my wife allows it so obviously today's video was a bit of a daft comparison. I've really enjoyed making this video. It's been great for me. I love these days at work when I can come out and relive my youth. If you've enjoyed watching it, drop us a like and subscribe so we can keep doing daft stuff for you. Cheers.